here with Leonardo Bellicini, winemaker and in charge of all production at San Felice today. You just got here and I just got back. Uh, we were in Italy and we just visited you. And uh, there's a lot of great things going on there. And you, you're very young, but you've been at San Felice for almost 30 years. Yeah. And uh, a lot of things have changed and, uh, you know, uh, kind of the name San Felice has really become one of the prominent names in Chianti Classico under your guidance and the guidance of the team. Uh, there's a great story there. We talked about it when I was there. And almost 30 years ago, right when you were hired, there was a study with the University of Florence mm -hmm. of vines that were almost extinct or going extinct to try to bring them back and see if any had promise in the Chianti Classico region. Can you tell us a little bit about this project and your thoughts as a young guy going there, seeing all these dusty old vines, and today your thoughts about the progress that you've made? Well, actually, yes, I arrived in San Felice in uh, 84, 4 June 84, and we, my first job has been just working in vineyards with the University of Florence, to, to, just to measure the shot every week, different rootstock and uh, with Sangiovese, how do they manage in the, during right. the growing season. Just a couple of years later, in 86, we, the university came back to San Felice asking for a, a, a vineyard, a piece of land where well, plant a vineyard. Um, of all the huge heritage of uh, forgotten varieties that they collect in our region, and uh, just to save from the genetic erosion, we say yes, but at the beginning we say yes mostly to be pleased with the university, right, right, with, right. Uh, really, uh, because we see an interest in this experimentation. And uh, in the first few years, since I haven't seen the grapes, also if you consider that uh, the end of the 80s were well, the, the period where the young winemaker was much more involved in uh, Cabernet Merlot developing the international varieties. international varieties that became so popular at the time in Chianti, uh, and so I didn't pay any attention to these <laughs> little vineyards. But uh, in 1990, when I saw the bunches, I realized that a few of them really have some great character. Talking about quality, right? When I, when I saw the bunches and uh, I, I selected the, the 30 red varieties I thought could be interesting and doing micro vinification in the lab. I mean in the lab because at the beginning it was only 18 vines each variety, right. so it's really tiny production. But the Pugnitello came up soon with a strong personality and so I decided to graft over a thousand vines to see... Graft a thousand vines at Pugnitello? Yes, Pugnitello yeah. on... A, 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 old rootstock. Old, old rootstock, to right. be a, a, a little bit quicker. Right. Because you know, if we planted, we need uh, three, four years. Right. And, um, and the result, making the first three barrels, was much more exciting. People don't know that... So, you find Pugnitello, you bring it back from extinction, but it's not a listed grape, so you really can't bottle it. You have to go to the Department of Agriculture. Exactly. You have to follow all this red tape. So you could have produced it earlier, but I think the first vintage was 03. 03. Yeah. was 2003. And today, Pugnitello, San Felice owns vineyards in the Maremo, which is coastal mm -hmm. Tuscany. Obviously, the, the base, the hub is in Chianti. Is in Chianti. Yeah. And then Capo Giovanni in Montalcino. Montalcino. Exactly and, right. Yeah. And of all those places, you grow Pugnitello. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, for different reason, naturally the, the most important is in Chianti because uh, I I've started to use in the Chianti blend to give more personality to our Chianti and use the Pugnitello as a sort of a trademark of the San Felice production and uh, up there I have 30 acres at the moment in production but uh, in late 90s I've started to plant in uh, Montalcino and Marimma too and so down there I produce uh, other two uh, local tiny production, but I decide to blend it uh, with the varieties typical of each other. So right. Montalcino is naturally known 
for Sangiovese. So I've done 60% Pugnetello and 40% Sangiovese. The name of the wine is Archeos. And in Maremma, the most well-known varieties as a red is Ciglia Giolo. Right. I've done the same blend, 60-40 and it's called Mater Vitis. Which means the mother vine, right? Mother vines, that uh, the name come from, uh, uh, the, the reason is because the, the last vine, Risket, uh, was founded in, uh, in a region which is really the gate entering to Maremma area. Right, and in San Felice the wine is just called Pugnatello. It's the hundred percent, yes. And we tried that when we were there and, you know, we were, we were drinking, tasting a lot of wines and it's, uh, an interesting varietal because it's very big and juicy and fresh and it's got a, a lot of complexity but it's got velvety smooth tannins and it exactly seems right. very drinkable young and I asked you I said you know obviously 2003 was your first vintage how do they age and you thought that they had a tremendous aging ability yes it has um, I, I mean we released the DO3 in the market but I still have a few bottles of them first three barrels that I start to make in 95. So, are not 50 years, but uh, at the end, 15, 20 years, I can see that wine can really do very, very well. Right, and I, I, think, I think I'm gonna make you a little deal because my good friend Verdoni, who you met, gave me an 89 from the Experimental Vineyards and a 91 from the Experimental Vineyards. There might be a little bartering go up, going yeah. on here today. <laughs> well, if you go to Pianti Classico, Casanova Verdenga, Borgo San Felice is a great place. It's not only a great place because of great wine. The hospitality is incredible. The restaurant is definitely going to be a Michelin one star. I mean, absolutely fantastic. The hotel and the rooms are gorgeous, well kept. The service is unbelievable. The wine speaks for itself. Great name in Chianti Classico under your guidance. And I would suggest anybody going there and it's one of those places where you want to go for a long weekend or week or month or year or two years <laughs> and just relax because yeah. it's it's one of those beautiful places in the world and thank you for having me there thank and you thank you for coming back to new jersey to thank see you us. I, I can say that really we would be pleased to welcome uh, all your friends that uh, come to visit us if they want to stay there or if you want to just come uh, visit the cellar and taste a couple of wine that will be really wet. Thank you for the hospitality.